audience. We're Tom and AI, and today we're proposing a super cool idea, intelligent traffic system. So it's a smart system that actually uses artificial intelligence and deep reinforcement learning to teach the traffic light about you, about the drivers. So the most important value proposition of our project is that we do not require any behavior changes. So it's totally from the previous to traffic management system. Okay, so um, next. The problem we are going to solve is traffic because uh, traffic is a pretty serious uh, problem and so have you ever um, experienced when you're driving and you have to stop all the time just for the red lights? Or have you um, need to like have to um, stop at the red light waiting for more than one minute just to that the other side of, um, and actually there's no car going on the other direction of the road. So that is a problem and we want to reduce the idle um, road usage. Okay, so um, and it's it's like the world is cool with artificial intelligence, but however, the traffic lights, the most obvious for our daily transport is not responsive at all. So next one, it is not just a matter of uh, of a time. Okay, so uh, it also costs fuel waste, and however, every everything all comes down to money, and it happened all across the world. For example, in US alone. 63 billions of dollar waste annually, and it's on like 4 billions hours of delay, and also 9 billions uh, lead up fuel waste. So it's a pretty serious problem and very urgent. That is why we want to look at it right now, and then we want to address a solution that can actually solve this kind of problem. And next one. So, yes, there are some existing solutions. For example, in Hong Kong, when the pedestrian will want to cross the road, there's a button that we can press to make the red light come sooner, so we can save time when there's no car actually going on the road. The other solution is uh, proposed by BMW and Siemens. So uh, some large uh, organizations actually use like devices to be installed on vehicles. So um, the traffic light can signal the drivers, the, the vehicles, to let to, to the driver know what is the traffic situation look like right now and what is the uh, proposed route to take to save time. But those solutions, they are very manual and intrusive to drive it. So we don't want to actually, um, I, I mean like normal users like us, we don't want to do a thing, like we don't want to change our daily routine just to solve this kind of problem. Okay, so what we're proposing now is that um, a solution that we do not require additional behavior changes and we just need to enjoy the improvement of the traffic automatically. And so I will now, now base on, pass on to Steve to talk about our deep reinforcement learning agent. Thank you, Jeff. So yes, we use deep reinforcement learning algorithm to solve this problem by dynamically changing the time traffic light duration. But before diving into deep reinforcement learning, I would like to give you a brief idea of how a how in reinforcement learning work. So in typical reinforcement learning setup, we have an environment and an agent. The environment will send a state to the agent, which in turn, the agent will take an action based on that state. After that, the environment is going to send a pair of state and reward to the agent, which will update its knowledge. Okay, let's talk about the problem formulation. The objective of our project is to minimize the waiting time at the intersection. The state is represented by the number of cars at each direction. The, the action is to modify traffic light duration, for instance, green light plus five seconds and red light minus 10 seconds. And reward is defined as the number of cars passing the intersection divided by the number of cars staying at the intersection. So if the number of cars passing the intersection increase or the number of cars staying at the intersection decrease during a traffic light period, the reward will goes up. So what our agent needs to do is based on the current state, it have to pick the best action that optimize that optimize the estimated rewards. But uh, so the knowledge base of our agent grows as it receives more and more pairs of state and reward. However, here's where the Here's where the problem comes in. The, the, since the traffic is highly complicated, 
the knowledge space can be very huge, tremendously huge. And this, it doesn't seem practical to store all the state and reward pairs. Therefore, here's, uh, here's, uh, here's uh, this is why we decided to switch to deep reinforcement learning. The deep Q network allows us to get rid of the, uh, the cumbersome of storing all the pairs. And the hidden, the hidden layers of our network will allow the agent to internally generate features to solve more complex problems, which might not be which might not be possible for a traditional Q-learning agent to deal with. Okay, let's take a deeper look of our neural network. So it is a V4 neural network with three hidden layers. For each of the hidden layers, we add a leaky relu activation function, which allows a small non-zero gradient, even if the unit is never activated. The input is a current state, while the output is the estimated reward for each of the possible actions as shown here. We also include dropout layers with dropout rate of 0 0.3 to regularize the network and to prevent the problem of overfitting. Next. Okay, let's move on to talk about the policy of our agent. We are adopting epsilon gradient approach. Essentially, for most of the time, our agent will always pick the action that optimize, that, that maximize our, the rewards. However, it has a probability of epsilon that will act randomly. This is to encourage exploration of solution, preventing it from falling into a local minimum. We also add a decay rate to decrease the reward, uh, sorry, to decrease the epsilon as the iteration goes on. So that after lots of iteration, our agent will stick to the optimal solution rather than exploring other solution. Now I will pass on to Jeff to, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah. let me explain it in an easier diagram. So we will install cameras on the traffic light and with, the, with computer vision supported by Microsoft Azure Confidence Service, we'll be able to know how many cars are on the road. This information will be sent to our server our deep, reinfor deep reinforcement learning agent will then decide which action to take. This signal will be forwarded back to the traffic light and modify the time duration for green light and red light. After some time, in the next iteration, uh, the traffic light will send a pair of state and reward back to our server and update its, its knowledge. And this iteration will keep going on and our traffic light will become more and more intelligent. Now I'll pass on to Jeff to talk about the architecture of our system. Okay, right. thank you, Steve. So we just talked about how can we handle a single intersection. But you might start to wonder, actually in the region or the city, there is more than just one intersection. There's a lot of intersections, and how can we manage to do that? So because the internet of thing is going hot and it's on the trending right now, so we're going to actually apply it in the real cases. So that's why we build our IoT architecture like X, and this IoT architecture can be separated into two parts, the centralized server and the distributed IoT cores. And those IoT cores, um, including uh, cameras, chips, that are actually installed on the traffic lights. So those IoT cores, they have camera to observe the traffic situation, left a chip to do the action, to actually emulate the traffic problems. And how can we handle those data? So we got the centralized server, um, written by Python Flask, and it hosts on uh, Microsoft Azure to make it more lightweighted. And it will use IoT Suite to handle the real-time high-load uh, traffic information come from every intersection in the region or in the city. And those data flow will, will go into the server, and the server will forward it to a cooking service, to the computer vision, and to do like object detect detection to understand, okay, how bad is the traffic right now? And how can we, like, um, I, I'm counting the cars and the uh, number of the cars, and those data will be forward to the reinforcement learning, which is the brand of our uh, architecture. Steve just talked about. So, so actually, when we look at reinforcement learning, it's a brand that can learn. So it's taking the real traffic data, and then it will learn to do the traffic pattern of the region, and it will generate a, the corresponding action that can maximize the, um, I mean, that, that can minimize the traffic problems. And those actions will be broadcasted to IoT devices 
the dedicated uh, IoT devices that can actually take the action to, uh, to solve the traffic problems. So it's like two parts interact with each other and it's like a, a network to solve the problem of the city. And those data going will also be stored in the document DB, which is to use for uh, future analysis. So we can we can do some like supervised machine learning to understand what is the traffic pattern of the city and how can we make use of this kind of data to do more predictions. Yes. And here we have a small video to further demonstrate our idea. And this video is uh, uh, this is a simulation system built by Python PyCan. And so the data input is actually the real Hong Kong traffic data. It's not fake. It's a real Hong Kong data from Uber and from uh, uh, Shenzhou Shuma as well. So we use Shenzhou Shuma to do the analysis and the Uber data to fit in the simulation to actually mimic the real Hong Kong traffic. On your left hand side is a normal case, normal intersection without our intelligent agent. On your right hand side is the case with our AI agent. And to, to further up, make it more obvious to, to know what, what's going on right here, at the bottom there's a graph, and there are two lines, red and blue. The red line is the congestion rate of the normal case, and the blue line is the congestion of congestion rate of the improved version. So you can see when there is a congestion factor happen, the red line will rise very high and retain for a certain period of time. But the blue line, it will rise as well, but it will be soft by our AI agent right at the moment. So it will drop down like this. So you can see actually see the difference like how our agent handle this kind of situation. And um, to make it like a real number, it's like 14% of the reduction on the traffic time. So it's very considerate, uh, considerable and very efficient. And yes. So how can we actually make money, make profit out of that? We have our business model. We provide a B2B uh, business service. And currently the government will be our major customers and we provide so we provide software and hardware integrated solution as well as future maintenance so um so it's not like a partial solution pr provided uh, before in the other um team i mean uh, it's a completed solution end to end to solve the traffic problem and of course we're also open to explore other business sector to partner with and this is our, our strategy and let me restate our value proposition we do not require any additional behavior changes from the drivers. So as a driver like me or users, we do not do, need to do a thing. We just need to drive and enjoy the change, the improvement of the traffic. And compare, you might wonder, okay, um, among the five teams today, there are actually including us, there are three teams talking about traffic. And how are we, I mean, di differentiate us from them? For the first group, they talk about computer vision to recognize car. But actually, there are a lot of current um, solutions they have already provided this computer vision solution, and they have more accuracy. And those uh, computer vision solutions can be a, a partial foundation of our data inflow. So we can use their data. We can also use data from Uber, data from DC Holdings, from a lot of different sources to make it more stable, stuff like that. And the, the computer vision uh, team, they also talk about, okay, how can we, their suggestion about a solution? They say, okay, a user can install like application devices to actually have a suggested route to take. But do you remember our brother public decision is that we do not want to in install any application. We want, do not want to do a thing. We just want the driver to, to let it happen. And everything will improve by our automatic intelligent agent. So that is our advantage over, over the project. And for the second group, um, they're talking about the signal. Yep. And actually, in the real case, when we are driving, we, we, we already need to handle a lot of real situations. For example, like the car is too near to our car, we need to like dodge them, and like we need to change, we need to switch the, the route, stuff like that, we want to make, to make it to other destination. So if we want, we, we also want to observe the real traffic suggestion from the board, it, it put on additional work on the drivers. And we do not want the driver to be diverted from their driving. We just want them to, uh, we need to focus on the driving, and we want to solve the traffic problem from the route. So we look at, yeah, like, like I said, we look at what the traffic, uh, traffic problem ha actually happened, what, what is the factor of the congestion, and then we solve it. Instead of looking at high level, like how can we um, provide a shuttle solution? So that is our be uh, benefit over the projects. And yeah, so 
Uh, we provided best user experience by improving the traffic um, seamlessly. So traffic becomes smooth and effortless. And also, this is how Tolan AI allows you to drive better. Thank you. This is the end of our presentation, and we're open to any uh, suggestions and questions, including like, detail about um, technical stuff and also business stuff. Sure. Uh, that's a good question. It seems like because we install a lot of uh, cameras and IoT devices, uh, lots of intersections, just, so the cost should be very high. So that's the problem we need to look at. So I have talked with two uh, two leader in the robotic team of HKST, and they want to like kind of like collaborate with us. And um, so they talk about okay, actually we can use like we we build a chip and then the uh, like electronic stuff from the very uh, very deep um, like customized chips and the cost should be much lower so we don't need to go to like store to buy just a, a fixed set of cameras we can build it by ourselves but we only need to provide a specific function that can do core detection so core detection is as the only function that we uh, need to build so that's how we save the cost of it yeah so have you how much? Uh, it's around like 10 US dollar per camera because we can really like save the cost of it yeah, if you just go to the market to buy the camera, you might take like more than 100 cam uh, US, US dollar, right? Yeah. So you need how many cameras to production? So you need um, to Yeah, that's right. Um, it's, a, it's a really good question. For intersection, we only need two cameras because one camera look at one direction, the other camera look at the other direction. We don't need to look at the car go past. We don't need to look at the car in common, right? So, so each intersection, there are two cameras, so it's like 20 bucks. And if we look at Hong Kong, it's around, I guess it should be around like 500 or more intersections. So we can just time the cost and cost like pretty cheap. Yeah. So it's like around a thousand, two thousand Hong Kong uh, US, US box for the installation of cameras. And I think the most, um, the, the cost should be located on the centralized server. Because we need to use, we need to process all the data in real time. We need to build a data pipeline. We need uh, sustain the database, so that is like the most of, most of the costs come come from. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, sure. How much data saving back on the junction? Wow. I don't know how many how many junctions in Hong Kong. Okay, about tens of thousands, like hundred thousand yeah. junctions in the city. So how much data saving back from from the junction back to the car? Like, um, all of them together. How much? <laughs> how many times it drive? I, I didn't have a very like specific number, but we predict it, it like I say it should be like five hundred for a region. So we want to we don't want to like handle Hong Kong by just a centralized server. We want to separate in these regions because we want to observe the regional traffic pattern, right? We want to learn the pattern instead of like looking at Hong Kong as a whole. So like each region probably take like five hundred intersections and we use this IoT architecture to coordinate, to make them like, okay, when I, when I do this action, I need to consider the other intersections actions as well. So they are like working together toward the same, the same goal. Yeah. yeah. And the data flow, um, because it's real time, but um, there, there are currently two solutions. One is to do computer vision on the uh, camera. It has some, uh, some benefit and there's a, a disadvantage. The benefit is that the data we need to send is just number. It's pretty, pretty light, lightweight, that it's pretty uh, weak flow. But the problem is that the cost of a single like, camera can be much larger. The other solution is that we process a computer vision image from a centralized server so that the, the data flow might be larger because we need to provide a frame of the images like in real time. So, uh, but the processing, I mean, I mean the process, I, I mean the installation uh, cost of a single device should be much, much lower, lower, yeah. So uh, we are currently considered to do um, computer vision on the centralized server because it's more like, um, more coordinatively, because we can look at the real, like, data sources from each devices and we can pre prevent the, the fail, fail, failure of the single devices because if they keep on sending wrong data, instead, um, we, we don't know like uh, what's wrong. We don't know what's wrong, and then we can uh, uh, debug 
But if they send me the wrong image, we can not we can recognize it right away, right? Yeah. So that is the benefit. Okay, sure. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, that's a good question. So you're asking like, uh, if we want to install a lot of camera in a very complicated intersection, how can we minimize the cost? I, I just, I just wonder whether say two cameras or, mm -hmm. or other things can like this uh, complex Yeah, I got it. So um, so actually, instead of install, I mean always install new devices on those like the uh, traffic lights, we also want to use the existing. Uh, cameras that has already uh, installed in Hong Kong because in Hong Kong to prevent the, the crime and also to, to like, minimize the crime, crime ratio we have a lot of like camera existing we can just use those data and it could save a lot of cost we just need to, to, to install some chips on the traffic light to do the action yeah that's a really good uh, comment Yes, that's nice. I agree with that. Yeah. Anyone has question or comments?